22 hoes on me, 22 clothes on me, 22 girls on me, 22 bros on me. Good bros, I'm giving you swag for free. Learn how to dress for me. Keeping any hoes for me. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I have another story time for you today. This story time is gonna be about the time that I caught my boyfriend cheating on me. So we're gonna start from the very beginning of this day when I was in the hospital with my son. The hospital was about an hour or two away from where I stay. So whenever I was to go up there, I would spend a night because no one feels like driving back and forth a whole hour or two away from your house all the freaking time. So whenever I would go up there, I would spend a night and then go back home the next day to do whatever I needed to do. But this day I didn't have my mom because she was my only transportation. She was at work, so I had to take my boyfriend. I asked him to pick me up. So come morning time, he is waiting outside of the hospital and I walk down to the hospital and I get in the car. And the first thing he says to me is, can I drive back home? Now I'm tired. So I told him, you know, I'm tired. I don't feel like driving. You know how it is in the hospitals. They only be having one chair in there, which is a recliner, and that's what you gotta sleep in whenever you spend a night there. And then there's nurses walking in and out of the room all day long, all night long, so you don't ever get no sleep there. So I told him I was too tired to drive. But he wasn't having that as an answer, so he got out, and then he walked around to the passenger side, and he was knocking on my window for like a whole, we probably went back and forth for like a whole two freaking minutes, because he kept asking me to drive, and I'm just sitting in the car still, and I'm like, no, bro, like, you you drive. Why you can't drive back? You drove here, drive back. So people are starting to look at us, so I eventually just give up, and I climb over to the driver's seat, and I drive off. Now we coming up onto the highway, and we're finally on the highway, and it's about, like, 20 minutes later after we start driving on the highway when he's like, like so what are we gonna do today? And I'm just like, um, I'm, I'm really tired, so I just wanna go home and go to sleep, or take a nap for a while, you know? And before I was even done saying that, he had turned the radio all the way up to block out what I was saying. I guess he had an attitude because I said that I didn't want to be with him. So I just ignored it because he, he does childish things like that all the time. So I just ignored it. So when I'm really tired and I'm driving, I'm a cautious driver. Like I'm going to drive the speed limit. I'm not going to drive super slow, but I am going to drive the speed limit. And I'm also quiet. So this whole time that we was driving, I wasn't even talking to him. I wasn't talking to them because his friend was in the back seat. I wasn't talking to neither one of them because I was too tired. I'm just focusing on getting home. So it's probably like another 20 minutes later when he looks over me and he's like, Bruh, just get out. Like, just pull over so I can drive because you driving too freaking slow and you look dead. You like you don't even want to be driving. And in my head, I'm just thinking like, bruh, did I not tell you this when I got in the car? Did I not tell you that I was too tired to drive? Did I not tell you to drive back? So what do you mean that I look like I don't want to drive? I told you this. And so it's probably another exit, like at least two miles down. So when we finally get to that exit, I pull over and we're at a stoplight in the middle of the fucking street. What does this nigga do? He gets out the car once again and he comes over to my side and he's knocking on the window once again, just like he did at the hospital. And he's like, just climb over the seat, bruh. Just climb over the seat, bruh. And I'm looking at him like, bro, you're doing the most in front of your friend and you're doing the most in the middle of a fucking street. So I climb over to the passenger seat and I'm not even trying to hear his mouth no more. So I immediately just get my earphones out and I listen to music on my phone and I block his ass out for the rest of the ride back home. So when we get home, um, he pulls up to my house to drop me off and I get out the car and I look back and I'm like, bye, bae. And then he says, bye, bruh. Now he calls me bruh whenever he's mad at me. So I'm just like, okay, like you'll cool down. You'll stop being mad because you mad at me for a stupid ass reason. I don't even know why you mad at me to be honest. So I go into the house and like I said, I was tired. So whenever I do go into the house, um, all I did was take off my clothes, take a shower. Then I laid down and I had at least a three, four hour nap. Now I wake up and I see that there is no messages from him on my phone. So I text him and I'm like, are you calmed down now? Like, what was the problem? What is your problem? I'm not understanding why you're mad at me. And he texted me back like, Nothing, bruh. Like, you ruined my whole day. I was supposed to spend the whole day with you, but you didn't want to be with me. You wanted to go home and go to sleep instead. And I'm just texting him back and forth. I'm like, bruh, you've stayed in the hospital with me before. You know how it is in that hospital. Those rooms are really, really small. So yeah, they only have one chair, which is a recliner. That's what I got to sleep in. And you know how the nurses be. I don't get no sleep there. And he was like, okay, bro, well, it's over now. So do you still want to go out with me today or what? And I texted him back like, yeah, I still want to go out. 
So it was probably like two hours later when he pulled up to my house. I go outside, I get in the car, his friend is still in the back seat. Um, we pull off and the first place we go to is the mall. Now when we get to the mall, um, the first place we go into is Forever 21. He gave me some money to give me a couple outfits and then he walked off to a store that he wanted to go with his friend. Now when I'm done shopping there and I done got my outfits and I paid for them and everything, I called him up and I was like, are you ready to leave? And he said yes, so I met him back at his car and the next place we go is to drop his friend off. Now after that, the plan for the rest of the day, it was probably like seven, yes, yeah, seven in the afternoon after that when we came back from the mall. So the plan for the rest of the day was to just get a hotel room and we were just gonna stay in a hotel room. We got hotel rooms basically all the time because he always wanted me to spend a night with him and I'm not cool with his mom, so. We, we don't be in his house like that. We don't be sleeping over at his house like that. So after we drop his friend off, we um, pull up to the hotel and he checks in. I stay in the car. He walks out the car to go into the hotel to check in and gets back in the car. We drive to the room and you know, once we get in there, everything's good. We're eating our food. We're talking, chilling, watching TV, laid up and stuff. Everything was good. It's basically like earlier had never even happened. We both had dropped our attitude. So let me tell y'all something about me. I'm a nosy person, okay? When I'm in a relationship with somebody, I have trust issues just because of my past relationships that I've been through. I have major trust issues and he knows that and I always be going through his phone. Never have I ever found anything before this time though. He always be having his phone with him. So I was just chilling on the bed and he decides that he wants to get up and go to the drink machine. Our room was all the way at the very end of the hallway and the drink machine was all the way at the other end of the hallway. So it's probably like, he, he probably would have been gone for at least like, I don't know, two minutes, two or three minutes. So yeah, I'm chilling on the bed and he gets up to walk to the drink machine and I looked over for no apparent reason and I noticed that on the table beside the bed was his phone on the charger. So of course I reached for his phone. I knew the code to get in, so that was no problem. And the first thing that I always go to is his Facebook Messenger to see who he's been inboxing and see who's been inboxing him. So I go there and the first thing that I see on the conversation list is this bitch name. We are gonna give her a fake name. We, this bitch name Alexis, okay? And like I said, the drink machine was just right down the hallway. So it's not like I was about to have all the time in the world to go through all their text messages. So the first thing that I did was call this girl. I called her and by the time she answered, it probably rung like three or four times. And by the time she answered, he was back in the room and he saw me on his phone and he came and he snatched the phone from me and he hung up on her. So he takes the phone from me and he goes and sits on the couch and he's just like, why was you going through my phone? Why was you going through my phone? And I'm just like, who is that? Like, why are you talking to her? He was like, nothing bruh, you made me mad earlier. So I texted her. I'm just like, for what, like what? So we finding dumb ass reasons to text other bitches now. Okay, so I was chill about the whole situation. I was just getting up off the bed and I'm getting my stuff together and I'm trying to walk out the room because I wasn't, I wasn't even trying to be around him no more because he pissed me off. So as I'm trying to walk out the door, he jumps up from the couch and he runs over to me and he's trying to keep me from leaving the room. He's pulling me back. Every time I open the door, he's shutting the door back. While he's trying to keep me from leaving the room, he's just like, babe, I'm sorry, babe, I fucked up, babe. We weren't even talking about nothing. I'll even show you the conversation. But I wasn't even trying to listen to none of that. Like, I started arguing back and forth for him just so that he would let his guard down and step away from the door. Then when he finally stepped away from the door, that's when I darted out the door. So after that, I'm walking down this long ass hallway and he eventually catches up to me. He's pulling me by my clothes, trying to get me to go back into the room. And he's trying to talk to me. I forgot what he was saying to me, but he said something that ended, um, that made me end up turning back around and going back to the room. So we walking back to the room now. He's like, bro, when you get back to the room, you can read the conversation, you can read the conversation. And I, w I still wasn't even trying to listen to him. Like, it's just like the simple fact that you, you got another female on your phone, you entertaining another female because I supposedly made you mad earlier when I didn't even do anything. And he's steady saying, oh, I'm sorry, babe, I'm sorry, babe. I fucked up, babe, it won't happen again, babe, this, this, and that. And you know when niggas be like, it's not gonna happen again, it's gonna happen again. So that made me mad. And it was a point in time during us arguing back and forth where I had grabbed his hair or whatever and I hit him and his face got sore after that. And then when we did get back into the room, he went straight to the bathroom and he looked at his face and he saw that he had a couple of scratches on his face. So that's when he got mad at me and he wasn't calling me bae no more. He was calling me by my name now. So when he came out of the bathroom, he's like, fuck you Tay, I'm done with you Tay. You left scratches on my face. All you do is leave scratches on my face. You left another scar on my face. 
I'm done with this. I don't want to do this no more. So I'm just like, okay, bro. Like, whatever. I don't even care. And he's like, man, you need to just leave. You need to just fucking leave. I wasted my money on this hotel room. I'll stay here by myself. You need to leave. Matter of fact, if you're not going to leave, I'm going to leave. So he was trying to get his stuff. And I'm sitting on the bed on my phone texting my friend. So I'm looking down like this. And I'm just texting my friend to ask her, can she come and get me? Because he was my only ride. And since I'm cooled down now, I'm willing to sit here and wait for somebody to come and get me. So I'm looking down on my phone and I'm texting her and he's still over there running his mouth saying whatever. I wasn't even listening to it, so I don't know what he was talking about. But he had got all his stuff and he was walking out the door. And then I heard, fuck you, bitch. And then he threw alcohol in my face. He threw alcohol in my face and threw the bottle at me and spit at me and walked out the door and left the building. So after that, I'm just sitting there with my phone and my eyes are closed. My phone is covered in alcohol. Um, my hair is covered in alcohol. So I go to the bathroom and I rinse my phone off. Not rinse it off, but you know, I get something wet and I wipe it off. And after I was done cleaning my phone off, he called me one time, I declined. He called me another time, I declined. And then, you know, I'm just sitting there thinking about everything that just happened. And I'm just sitting on the edge of the bed crying now. And then um, I hear a knock at the door and they're just knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. They weren't even saying anything. So at first I was thinking that was him. He done came back since I declined his call. Maybe he came back to the room or something. I don't know. But then I'm thinking in my head like, no, because if that was him, he would be saying something. He would be saying, Tay, open up the door or something. You feel me? So I was trying to ignore whoever was knocking on the door at first. And then they just kept going. And at least like five minutes went by and they still knocking at the door. So I get up and I go and open the door and it's the person who runs the hotel. And he's like, you've been checked out, so you gotta go. And I'm just like, bro, okay. And I shut the door in his face. So I get all my stuff together. So um, once I left the room, I went and I sat in the hotel lobby on the couch and um, the person who was knocking on the door walked by me. He was like, are you okay? Because he did see me and him out in the hallway fighting. So he was just asking if I was okay. And I was like, yeah. So I had FaceTime my friend again, and I was just like telling her the whole situation that just happened. And she said that she'll be there. She was on her way. She lived just right down the street, so it wasn't gonna take her that long. While I was on FaceTime with her, he had called me two more times and I declined both of those calls. So she finally pulled up and when we got to her house, the first thing that I did was I went to sleep. Um, now, when I woke up the next morning, I had text messages from him and he was like, um, just to let you know, I went by and I filed a police report before you scratching up my face and you know, you can get in trouble for that and this, this and that. And um, you still owe me my $40 and all that. And I ignored the message. The first thing that I did, cause he tried to call me again. The first thing that I did was I changed my number and I went on Facebook and I blocked him. So now you have no way at all getting in contact with me. But just to let y'all know though, it was probably like, Two weeks later, where I had got on Facebook and I unblocked him because we do have a child together. So I it was something I had to tell him that he had to do that, you know, has something to do with our child, not with us. So, you know, while he was doing what he needed to do, he did try to talk to me again. And I was in the mood to listen that time since it looks like two weeks had gone by, so I'm over the whole situation. And he was just explaining to me that there was none that I needed to worry about. Um, he wasn't doing anything. It wasn't even cheating because they weren't even talking about anything and all this, this and that. So my dumb ass had ended up forgiving him and we got back together. He had let me talk to the girl, so I forgave him anyway. It's like, of course I'm not gonna sit up here and believe you telling me that y'all weren't talking about anything when I didn't even get to see the conversation. I'm pretty sure you deleted it by now. So I was just like, okay, well, I don't believe shit you're saying, so let me talk to her. So he let me talk to her and she told me the same thing, that there was nothing going on. So. I believed him and we had got back together. But yeah, so that was the end of my story time of how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me and I'll see y'all in my next video.